Hey there everyone, I'm Pelkifenoid, and welcome back to Tales of Destiny! Last time we went through the under the underground passageway of Heidelberg Castle. And today we are of course gonna sneak into a castle and go through the place too. But before doing that, in between episodes, as I said, I leveled up one level. Yep, that's all I needed. <laughs> So I can now read this stone slab tablet thingy. Stan needs to be level 25 and Dimlos need to be level 23 for you to be able to read this. So let's try this again. Some words are engraved on the monument. Beyond the wall of flames, this is slow as hell, is the feast of death. What is its name? Uh. Wall of Flame? I suppose that is Firewall? The breath of the demon blows across the ground like a missile. What is his name? Uh... Missile... Sword? The rising torrent of flames is truly the demon's breath. Okay. And it broke and we get... Wow, that was uh, awkward. I don't know if you saw that, but my computer freak pretty much just froze for five seconds right there. <laughs> anyway, Stan mastered the sacred skill, Fire Wave. And we also got the Sacred Text 5. Yeah, you will get what's called a Sacred Text when you uh, are high enough level and you read those stone slabs. So it's a... Uh, very much worth it, yeah. And of course, the level requirements for all the uh, slabs are, are of course, different. So let's check out Fiery Wave. I think I'm going to take away Spin Slash for that one, actually. Creates a short-ranged wave of flame. Okay, sounds cool. It is pretty cool, though. It's a pretty good skill. It's not the best, but I guess I can't complain. And also, Stan leveled up once, and he got the Fear Flare spell. Very nice, if you remember Ifrit. It was actually was at least supposed to use it against me in Eternia. It's a very good spell. Anyway, I'm gonna meet you guys back at the entrance to the castle, the the ladder that we saw last time. So see you guys there. Alrighty, we are back. So let's just sneak into Heisenberg Castle. Wait, Heis he Heidelberg. <laughs> Heisenberg, yeah, would that be something? <laughs> that was actually pretty cool. Anyway. This is the underground prison of the castle. We'll strike Leiden without mercy. I'm with you. Oh yeah, let's go. Of course we start into in prison. That's really that's that's bad design right there. <laughs> anyway, let's just go up here. Once again, I really really like the music, and apparently the knights of this kingdom is a little bit uh, shabby. <laughs> really looks like it. Anyway, is this where I want to go? Yes, this is the audience hall. This place you kind of want to remember for later. It's uh, it's not a big deal, but you still want to remember it. Uh, anyway, go in here and we have a treasure chest here with a wind spear. But didn't we just get a wind spear? Well... Yeah, or that was a winged spear. Oh, I'm so sorry. The wind spear is actually a disc. Or a disc engraved with the image of wind. Which I am gonna give to Philia. Let's see, is it good? If I can find it, that is. There you are. Yeah, it's pretty damn good. <laughs> Sweet. But what spell does it give? Air slash! Ooh, nice. Several accelerates enemies with air. I really like how that sounds. Yeah, I, it's basically a upgraded version of Wind Arrow. Or at least the... Or, well, I guess I can say the upgraded Wind Spell. Yeah. Alrighty. So, that's everything we can get in here, so let's move on. And I will say, I'm not a huge fan of the checkerboard's floor. It doesn't really fit well. I will say, though, though this place is a bit long, it's... Uh, it's really not that bad. It's a... Uh, Relatively easy dungeon. It will take a little while, I guess. Ooh, a reflex. Sweet. But, uh, 
Well, first of all, the music in this place is pretty cool, and I, I actually really like this dungeon. Anyway, we got the Reflex Armor, and oh dear lord, what an upgrade. Wow, a hundred defense. Yes, please, give it to me. <laughs> and we have a Pine Gel right there. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. Anyway, so you might be... So you see those two unlit torches on the wall right here. Suspicious? Oh yeah. We need to light them with the Sorcerer's Ring, of course. And that will magically make a door appear. Gotta love it. <laughs> uh, oh, whoa, first counter. Wow, the counter rate in this place isn't that bad, apparently. Anyway, new enemies, of course. We have the bishop, the gremlin, and the... No, we already seen the ghoul, never mind. So, I think it's a good time for us to... At least, well, let's do this first. <laughs> let's sh show off Air Slash. And... Let's cast Ray over there. And let's do this! Fiery Wave! Ooh. I like it. Nice little, uh... Well, blades of wind, I suppose. And as you see, Fiery Wave hits a lot of times, and it is very powerful. Sacred skills, they're a bit stronger than normal skills, but they do cost a bit more TP. But they're definitely worth it if you are a little bit... Uh, well, let's just say... Um, power hungry. <laughs> you want to do a lot of damage really, really fast. Anyway, so we have this room right here. This one is not that bad. Of course, you have a lot of torches, and then you have, I believe it's three that's not lit. And there's also some doors here we can go through. So, of course, what you want to do is light the torches. And you will be able to go through those locked doors. Very simple. Very, very simple. I have a new enemy once again, the Clay Demon. Oh, no, no, no! I didn't... Okay, what is going on? I do not want to spam fire a wave like this. Okay, you know what? I need an air slash. Well, Ray would probably be better, but I don't really care. Air slash is almost instant cast. Gotta love it. And of course, you have the uh, the uh, sacred skills you can combo into, well, normal skills. Very, very nice. Since they are technically one level higher. But anyway, let's see, can I go through this door? Yes, I can. And in it, we... Oh, right, that's the one door that you don't really need to go through. <laughs> anyway, let's light this one. And I believe that should open the door to a treasure chest. God, I love that I can combo the fire wave into a tiger blade. It is so good. <laughs> there we go. And this, this... Yes, this is the room with the treasure chest. We get... Hey, Aquamarine. Not bad at all. And by the way, if you hear that my... If you hear some clicking in the background, that is the hard drive on my computer. Uh, I think it's about to die, pretty much. So I'm gonna warn you now, if you hear some clicking or if, if there's no videos in, let's say, two or three days, my hard drive probably died. <laughs> it kinda sucks, but hey, it happens, I guess. Bit annoying, sure, but especially when I'm trying to start the computer and I just click, 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 click. Nope, mini blue screen. Uh -huh. Very annoying, but eh, what can you do? If it happens, it happens. Nothing I can do with that. Anyway, we want to go up here. And. Ooh, torches. We have these statues. Look. Weird, I will say that. And we have something that's a. Looks like it's supposed to be a door, but well, it looks like it's frozen in time or something, which is fitting because this is the way to the clock tower. <laughs> but you, what, what you want to do here, though, is <sighs> come on. I w it was went so well in the beginning. No encounters. <sighs> so I was trying to say, what you want to do here? Let's try to shoot the sorcerer's ring on this lady. You see, she have a crystal ball of some sort in her hands. That will. Barely open the door, but there's no way you will be that fast. So what you want to do is grab this statue and put it right underneath her. And the door is always open, so let's go. Oh, <laughs> I thought maybe it's gonna say something, but welcome to the clock tower. 
you would probably guess that death is the boss here. Yes, that's a Castlevania reference. <laughs> I've been playing a lot of Castlevania lately. And you might also think that this place is gonna suck. I mean, it's, it's a Castlevania-ish level. Well, you're halfway right. I won't say this place is fun. Not at all. But it's really not that bad either, so... I guess it balanced it out. <laughs> but what you want to do in this place is... Climb these chains. Yeah. Why couldn't the Belmonts do that? I don't know. And we have this machine here, which we of course want to activate. There wouldn't really be a big reason to go down here if, or up here if we couldn't activate the machine, would it? I will give this place one thing though. It looks pretty damn cool. It really looks like a clock tower and a well of some sort, but just ignore all the gushing water. It looks like a clock tower. Anyway, if this part gets a little bit too long, I will cut it in two and make it two parts. Which I'm gonna upload the same day, by the way, instead of, uh, instead of two separate episodes. Just so we can get through this place as quickly as possible, that is. Anyway, so there's something that I've been uh, wanting to ask you guys for quite some time. And that is, do you mind the voices that I do when there's dialogue on the screen? Because, well, a friend of mine told me that he cringed every time that I did a voice. <laughs> a female voice, that is. And by the way, there you saw there was two uh, chains down here, and the other one will just take you to an orange gel, which I don't really care about. But, yeah, do you mind the voices? Do you want me to stop with them, or are you okay with them? I, 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 I can stop with them if you want to, that's... Not a problem, but please just just tell me. Anyway, so we have this lever right here. There was a sound of something moving. And it is the elevator. The pulley seems to be moving. Yep. But, uh... Oh. Yeah, you see, it's, uh, it's down now. Okay, this is weird. They're supposed... The game is supposed to ask me if I want to leave a character here, but what the hell's going on? Okay, this is weird. Anyway, I'm just gonna go up here and get this treasure chest first then, I guess. We get a hunter's bow, which I'm gonna equip on Gar. Is it, or is it even better than composite bow? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm gonna equip it. I noticed that Gar didn't really do much without the bow on, but I guess I can't expect that, and I'm really not complaining since he's Still just... Oh, level 18. Well, it's actually getting along quite nicely then. Anyway, so I'm gonna try this a little bit more and see what the heck is going on. They're supposed to ask me if I want to leave a character. This is annoying. Okay, I found it. Okay, you need to go into the elevator first to actually be able to leave someone behind. The elevator won't move. I think we need to find some way, some kind of switch to activate the elevator. You don't say. So of course, now we need to go all the way back to the elevator. Just so we can leave someone behind, so we can go back to the elevator and actually go up. Yeah. <laughs> I do not remember it be uh, that I, I... I do not remember that I actually had to do that. I actually had to go and... Well, go into the elevator first. I don't... did not remember that. This must be the switch to control the elevator. Someone has to stay here and turn turn it on. Who should stay? I think it's best if Gar stays. I don't really know why. I think... I, I have a feeling that Gar is gonna do just fine. He's gonna be able to... defend the switch very well. <laughs> Gar, can you handle this for us? Sure, consider it done. And Gar left the party. So now Leon's with us again! Yay for those Leon fans. <laughs> oh, I miss my holy bottles again. Hey, anyway, as I was saying before all that happened, the voices. Should I stop or should I not? It's up to you. <laughs> anyway, let's go into the elevator this time. Gar, please turn the switch on. Done. Alrighty. I, I know, I know that I don't have the best voice for any character really. I just. I just say the voice that first pops into my head when I see the character. Like, uh, like Stan, I know he's a 
he likes to yell and all that, and even though I don't yell, I know he got a high-pitched-ish voice, I suppose. Great, we made it up here. Gar, we'll be right there. Fine, be careful. And I know some of the characters actually got English voices in uh, Tales of the World, Radiant Mythology, which I've been playing a little bit uh, lately, actually. I managed to find it in the store, actually. That was very surprising. The pulley is frozen up. I guess we... I guess it won't move unless we throw it loose. So, yeah, it's frozen, so simple but just shoot it with the sorcerer's ring. If... What the heck? Do I have to do it from up here? Yes, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, the characters got an Engl Some of the characters got an English voices in Tales of the World, and... Though some of them are very good, like... Uh, I really like Leon's English voice in that game, and... Philly and Rudy is pretty much spot on, I'd say. And Stan's voice is pretty good too. I think it's a little bit too too dark, I suppose. It, I have I, I don't really know why. I always felt like Stan had a well, what what should I say? A high pitched ish voice since he he likes to yell and all that. So that's really what I think. I do like how he says fireball though when he casts that. <laughs> That is actually very nice. But then there's also some voices that I don't really like. Or I don't I, I don't have anything against them, it's just that I feel it doesn't fit the characters. Like yeah, Gar's English voice in that game. It's just it doesn't fit him at all. They got uh, DC Douglas to uh, voice Gar. Now and I I love DC Douglas as a voice actor. For those who don't know, he uh, he voiced Albert Wesker in Resident Evil 5, and I know a lot of people don't really like his Wesker voice. I think it is perfect, even though it's a little bit cheesy. <laughs> and I feel that's a perfect fit for... Well, the voice is perfect for Wesker. I think the voice is a perfect fit for Albert Wesker. But it doesn't fit Gar at all! <laughs> he uses the Wesker voice as Gar. And... That's just... No! It, no! <laughs> I, I'm sorry, it, it doesn't fit. And I can't go through that door, why? Uh, that was weird. Oh, oh well, whatever. Let's see, this is not where I want to go yet, is there? Lever moved, okay. Oh, come on, unholy bottles. But anyway... Oh, oh, and by the way, uh, Chester's voice in that game... I really, really like that one. That's pretty much how I... Uh, expected Chester to sound. <laughs> anyway, back to topic, I suppose. We are just unfreezing chains and turning wheels. And we also have a save point, which I think I'm going to use. And as you see, I haven't really saved in quite some time. <laughs> Thank God for save states. I should really say that, though, since... I just admit I used an emulator, even though it is very, very damn obvious already. <laughs> anyway, we have that little door down here. Whatever you do, do not go down there. If you do, you will end up back in the audience chamber. Remember that room that I said you... You should remember? You know, the one back all the way back in the beginning? Yeah. Go down there, you have to do the whole dungeon again. And I don't know about you guys, but... That doesn't sound fun. At all. <laughs> but, actually, that is all. We are done with Heidelberg Castle. When you go through this door, Leiden awaits you. Oh yeah, we will finally be able to take him on. I can't freaking wait. <laughs> so, next time, let's get back to Eye of Autonomy. And let's save the world. Dramatic. I know. <laughs> So, I thank you all for watching, and I see you all then.